shoes. Hey there, mes amis. We're trying again. We're going live from Paris here on Instagram as well as on Facebook. It's so good to be here with you. I know we had some technical problems. I'm trying to adjust my lighting here. I know we had some technical issues the last time we tried this. What can I say? It's Paris. You have to just kind of go for it. In fact, I have my Paris hair. Can't go straight here in Paris. It gets all wavy. So I'm so excited to be here with you. We're going to be talking about a couple of things in this Facebook Live. I have been to the amazing Architectural Digest show here in Paris, and I have to tell you, it was unbelievable. Truly one of the most stunning show houses I have seen probably in the last five years ever, anywhere. Um, cannot wait to show pictures of you uh, of it to you, which I will be doing um, on some blog posts once we get those written, probably doing some writing on the plane on the way back tomorrow. But I want to talk to you now about what we saw at the design show, the Architectural Design Digest Show 2018 in Paris happened in this wonderful building, this 1735 building from the year 1735, used to be a medical college, and this building is in total disrepair. It's being kind of rehabbed and soon it'll be turned back into some shared office spaces. So picture this, you're in this exquisite building with a marble front, beautiful facade and you walk in and it's in this stunning state of disrepair. There are exposed cables and exposed wires and graffiti on the walls and you think, what, where am I? And then you walk into the first salon and you see this stunning, inlaid floor in a snail swirl of in black and white marble gorgeous walls plaster relief walls with these giant like greek god looking hot looking guys this stunning plaster ceiling or you walk into another room with this beautifully cut um an inlaid um carpet um with an interesting pattern that just completely shows the furniture layout in the room and the walls are upholstered in suede and applique in velvet. I mean, stunning. And then you walk out of the salons that you were just in, the living room, the, the, the dining area. And then what do you see next? More exposed cables and you're walking over wires. It was the coolest, but the design trending was gorgeous and the design work was gorgeous. So let's start at the beginning. What's the difference between the show houses that are done in the United States and those done here in Paris? Well, there are a couple. Here in Paris, you know, the thinking man's country, the thinking man's city, um, the rooms can get a little esoteric. I remember a couple of years ago, I, I came out of the show house and I thought, boy, some of those rooms, rooms are really interesting, but I didn't really understand them. There was a movie playing on the wall and there was one chair in the room. So some of the rooms can get a little avant-garde here in Paris, not all, but some. Whereas in the United States, the rooms are very livable, right down to the last lamp and accessory. You could see yourself living in them or a family living in them or a, or a bachelor living in, in them or a you know power uh, lady boss living in them. They may not be your taste, but I got to talk to you about what happened to me at dinner tonight, complete with passing out because of this injury. It's very crazy. But anyway, we'll get there in a minute. So anyway, um, the rooms are very livable in the United States. In Paris, you, some of the rooms are done to the point where they're livable you can, and, and inhabitable. And in other cases, they're kind of suggested. And there was this really interesting media room in the Arc Digest show here, Architectural Digest show here, you look like you would break your neck if you tried to walk up this in, this little stadium seated there, seating area. Or there was this wonderful library in the show house this year that had these in um, these built-in bookcases that had um, arched tops, very few books, and the chairs were only a chair back and arms, and they and they just sat right on this double layered rug double um, double density padded rug. So some things get a little unusual and, and a little um, esoteric and a little bit avant-garde. And then other spaces are drop dead gorgeous. Even the avant-garde ones, you think, oh my gosh, that's really interesting. So in the United States, I think they go into greater detail to make it very livable. I think in Paris, from what I've seen, the designers start to create some statements. Also, in this year's show house in Paris, some of the furniture scale looked kind of interesting and 
overblown and um, kind of just overblown, like the scale of it, like a chaise that looked like it was a little too fat and a little too long. Um, so the, the, big, the biggest difference is how inhabitable the space might be. However, what do the spaces have in common between the Paris show houses and the, the show houses in the United States? They're gorgeous, beautiful work where designers are pushing the envelope, um, going places that perhaps a, a client wouldn't want to go, um, sh flexing some design muscles, um, and you're seeing some of the very best designers out there doing this work. So to be accepted into an Architectural Digest home as a designer, that is, that is a feather in your cap right there. It is very expensive to do show houses here in Paris as well as in the United States because you are begging, borrowing, and stealing, uh, not really stealing, but begging and borrowing furniture and um, all of the uh, fabrics that have, you have to leave in place, let's say, for window treatments to get cut. So it gets really expensive. Another big difference between the show houses in the United States and those in Paris, well, uh, I was so stunned by the ceiling work and and wall appointments in this Paris house this year. I said it was in my horrible French. You know, how long did you guys have to do this? They had a year to plan it and do it. In the United States, six weeks. Six crazy, get an ulcer, don't sleep at night kind of weeks. So those are just some of the differences for you. So let's talk trends. One of the interesting trends I saw at the show house that I also saw at the Maison Objet show and I will be talking next week about the trends at this huge design show called Maison and Objet. But something I saw starting to pop out at this show house that started to pop out at Maison and Objet was a color palette. The color olive started to pop out. I saw some of you groan and I saw some of you clap. And also the color goldenrod, not a yellow, not a gold, it's sort of a cross between the two, goldenrod. And if you want to go see some of the pictures I posted from the show house, go to my Instagram feed for my luxury design business, which has a feed of at, um, at IDH designs. I like interiors, dot, D like Donna, H like Hoffman designs. So at IDH designs, and you'll see pictures from the show house. But again, I promise you, I will be posting a blog with descriptions and lessons about all of that. But if you want a quick look, just, just look in my saved Insta stories. I have Paris 1, Paris 2, Paris 3 on that feed. So color palette, um, gray is still there, but it was reducing in this house. A little bit of midnight navy, but I'll tell you what else was really big in this house, the color black, and it was stunning. It was stunning with the goldenrod. It was beautiful with the olive and a lot of creams. Gray is starting was taking more of like a back seat. It was there, but it wasn't the biggest story. But a lot of blacks, creams, golds, goldenrods. So what's happened at this show house, the metals were getting very, very warm and burnished as well. So a lot less silver, as we have been seeing for a few years now. Um, and something else that was really interesting at the show um, in Paris was the shapes of the upholstered furniture. One trend that I saw at the show house that really struck me that definitely happened at the Maison and Objet show, channel tufting. Oh, my goodness. It was gorgeous, and it wasn't just the normal channel tufting north-south, but there was a lot of horizontal channel tufting. And at the Maison and Objet show house show, I should say, I'll be posting about that next week and talking to you about it next week. But at the Architectural Digest show house, some of the channel tufting was replaced by um, like little tuxedo pleating which is beautiful detailing. I'm actually doing um, in a very large estate home I'm working on back in the United States. It's very labor intensive. Um, do you know, remember the, the gentleman's shirts back in this, you know, I don't know, it's like a vintage look. I guess it was like a 60s look for the tuxedo. It had that pleating across the chest. Well, imagine those little tiny dark pleats, or not dark, so tiny pleats going across a, an ottoman. It was Gorgeous, really, really beautiful. So interesting channel tufting at the show house, interesting tuxedo pleating at the show house, color palette I talked to you about. And in terms of the shapes of the furniture, and this is a difference, I was gonna say it's a difference between Paris and the United States, but I'll tell you what, depends upon where in the US you are in terms of the design trend that's really hot for you. I know in the area of Philadelphia where I practice, my clients tend to ask me to do a lot of transitional design not traditional, it's not uber modern, it's somewhere in the middle, it's kind of a, a blended eclectic look. 
in Paris, the show house and the show houses I've seen have always aired on the side of modern. However, the Parisians love taking like an uber modern something and putting it next to a stunning antique. At the Kipps Bay show house in New York back in May, we saw antiques really starting to come into the discussion again in design combined with modern or transitional shapes. So here in Paris, you know, you, you're not going to, no sock arms on upholstered shapes um, at the show house. No, definitely no English arms, not one, but you might see a really interesting French faux toy chair next to two really cool, you know, vintage um, 1950s sofas. Um, kidney sofas really happening a lot at the show house, as well as some just cool vintage 60s and 70s kinds of shapes as well. So this show house showed a lot being done with upholstered walls. And I'm not just talking, hey, let's throw a fabric up on that wall. I'm talking about um, a pillow tufted silk that was then hand embroidered with bead that then had rosettes on it that were made of sequins, gorgeous you know, beautiful rosette. And then from there, um, it had, you know, there's some some beautiful raised silk. I, I never did petty point or embroidery, but imagine like little rosebuds that kind of had like a little bit of a raised area to them. Oh my gosh. So, oh, suede walls, um, a lot of interesting wall treatments, a lot of plaster wall treatments as well, not just ceiling. Um, so those are just a couple of the trends that we saw at the Paris show that, are some fun takeaways. So how can you use those in the United States? Hey, how about a feature wall? If you don't have the patience or the financial wherewithal today to do a full room of an upho upholstered walls, do an upholstered panel behind your bed. Don't do an upholstered headboard, just do it right on the, on the, on the wall itself and reduce your headboard. Um, do an upholstered ceiling uh, in, your, in a dining room area. And if doing an upholstered flourish on a wall and a ceiling is gonna you know, kill the budget, then heck, just frame some beautiful fabric. Don't put it behind glass and display it in three pretty panels and there you go, okay? So upholstered walls, interestingly done upholstered walls with things to be on just a simple flat fabric. Window treatments were very, very simple. And um, the furniture shapes were getting a little overblown, very, very rounded, some kidney and a lot of mix between um, antique and kind of vintage 50s, 60s. Okay, so those are some of the, the trends that we were seeing. I'd be happy to take your questions. I'm gonna see what kind of questions there are here. Um, let's see if I can move my mouse around there. Um, okay, I'm afraid if I move, if I take my hand off that camera, is it gonna go flying? So I'm getting thumbs up and hellos from people. Um, Lindsay's loving it. Linda's loving my hair. Thank Linda. I have no choice. This is actually my real hair. I straightened it out in the United States. I it's my hair is a big mystery. Um, somebody wants to know what happened um, to my finger. We were at dinner, and I have I speak French so badly it's embarrassing. I think I sound good, and as soon as I speak in French, they say, "So what part of New York are you from?" Mm. So anyway. I thought I was asking the waiter, the waitress, if the, the seafood tower had raw and cooked seafood on it. A lot of raw stuff, like snails, snails with hair, snails with fangs. A lot of raw things came to the table, which was okay. Steve likes a lot of raw. Anna and I were looking for the cooked part of this dinner. There was not a lot, but there was a cooked crab. And when I went to open the crab, I somehow sliced into my finger with the crab shell. Fine. So I bent down to my handbag to get a tissue to stop the blood. And I'm pretty, pretty squeamish. And between the hairy snail with these like things coming off of its whatever, the blood dripping down my finger, I started to pass out. And I don't mean like, oh, such a delicate pass out. I was like, Steve, I really, like, you know, uh -huh, here I go. And he was looking at me like, Don, are you okay? I said, no, my hearing's starting to go. Now my head's between my knees. I have... A napkin somebody's putting a napkin with cold icy stuff around my neck it was so embarrassing so that's my war wound right there feeling like an idiot in Paris all right guys if you have questions 
that you have for me about a design project. I normally teach a lesson and take questions on your project, but if you would like to ask me uh, about a project question, as long as I don't need to see a picture of it, I'm happy to, to take those questions. And while I'm waiting for those to come in, I'll tell you that next week I'm going to be talking about the Maison and Objet show, a massive design show that buyers from stores attend, that the editors from all the big magazines attend, that journalists who write about design attend, uh, that designers like to attend when we can, that fabric designers at attend, that furniture designers at attend, that accessory designers attend. We are all looking at that color um, forecasters attend. The Maison and Objet show is the heartbeat and center of the design world, and it is deciding what your home is going to look like over the next few years, okay? So I'll be talking about the amazing trends that I saw there as well, and I will be definitely blogging on both the AD Show House as well as Maison. There's a question coming in from Peggy. Was any furniture painted? If so, what color? If not, what color would? Peggy, Peggy is asking that question on Instagram. Peggy, at the, um, at the show house, at the Architectural Digest show house, there were lacquered woods, um, in blacks, in creams. Cream was really, really big, overtaking at the show house, overtaking um, gray. Um, when you saw a painted wood, if it was an antique, you know, it might be that really pale French blue that was juxtaposed with something more modern at the show house. Um, at Maison and Objet, I'll tell you what we weren't seeing. We were, we're, we're still seeing, I'm speaking quickly, I'm sorry. We were not seeing really blonde woods at the Maison and Objet show. At the show house, we were not seeing any blonde woods either. At Maison and Objet, which is a little more consumer driven, we're still seeing some of that limed wood, that grayed down distressed wood. Didn't see a lot of that at the show house here in Paris. There was a fineness to the, the things in the show house in Paris. These designers are used to working with clients with big budgets and the types of furniture that they were doing and showing reflected that. A lot of um, mid-tone woods, uh, nothing too deep in stain, more middle, middle stain, um, and nothing really dis distressed and not, not a lot of that limed wood, not a lot of that driftwoody kind of thing. Again, remember, this is a show house done by French designers and those focusing in Paris, so it is a more cosmopolitan look um it was a more modern look um probably wouldn't play with some of the clients that asked me to design for them it would have been a little too um forward and, and modern for them certainly you know farmhouse is huge in the united states right now none of that at this show house like not even like a sniff a sniff of it um hollywood glam really none of that either there's a little bit of 70s retro that you could argue argue i'll show you a picture of it when i do the blog you could argue that went a little bit perhaps hollywood glammy so peggy i hope that i answered you properly and if not feel free to answer uh, to send in rather um another question so if you guys if anybody else has a question about a project or about anything we did here in paris or any design observations from paris i'm happy to uh to answer those for you next week Tuesday, 4 p.m. Um, Eastern. I'll be giving you uh, a more organized because I'm working off of like some like wacky little notes I have here because we just got back from my fainting dinner. Um, I will be organized. I will be giving you a, a, a nice forecast on uh, what we saw at the Maison and Objet show, and I will tell you right now that the things we saw at the show to this week are pictures that will show up in House Beautiful a year from now or nine months from now and in your stores around that time as well. Peggy is saying, so what about white French detailed furniture? Well, Peggy, I'm so glad you asked that question because one day out here in Paris, I went to an amazing flea market called Clinincore. Um, and I shot some great video, we'll be posting that, and I'll be blogging about it and teaching about it as well. So yeah, when you go to the collectible and when you start to look in the flea markets out here, you will see things that have that beautiful white wood, whitewash, very Napoleon one um, directoire types of country, French, provincial look. Um, that look combines beautifully with modern. 
Um, it's still a look that's happening in the United States that was not done at all in this Paris show house. Remember the Paris show house, these are designers pushing forward. What's the next thing? What, where are we trying to push design? These are early adapters. Um, this is what they, they, this is what they want to see happen next in design, whether or not it'll catch, who knows, whether or not it'll catch in the United States, who knows, because remember what's trending in Paris is not necessarily what's going to be trending in the United States and what trends in New York and in the United States is not necessarily what's trending in Detroit or Charleston or Texas or California, right? Or Washington or North Dakota. So different regions in the U S have different trend styles, just like here in France, different regions have different trend styles. French provincial, the provinces, right? The suburbs different than what's happening in the metropolitan area. So Peggy, I don't want you to worry about, if you love white painted furniture, it, that's having a very big moment in the United States. Um, it's a, it has a historical context as well. If, and I know Peggy, I know you what you like to design because you're one of my students and I've seen your beautiful work in some of my private groups. So I know you like white um, painted furniture. You don't have a problem there. You're, you're still relevant and you should um, feel okay about that. And wait till you see Peggy, some of the pictures I got of white painted furniture at the flea market and clinic court. Oh, still in their original gorgeous white painted frame, these chairs, but you know, reupholstered in a fabulous, you know, blue animal print. Ah, oh, killer gorgeous. So there you go. All right. So I don't see any questions coming in on Facebook. I don't see any quest more questions coming in on uh, Instagram. So I'm thinking we're getting ready to wrap this baby up. Okay, lovelies, last call and questions, call one, call two, call three. I don't see anything coming in. Please check with us next week, 4 p.m. Eastern. We'll be talking live all about the trends from Maison and Objet, what kind of furniture shapes were happening in upholstery, in, wood, in woods. Where are the metals going? What kind of shapes were you seeing in general in the show? What colors were happening? What colors were not happening? We will talk about all that and more next week. Can't wait to see you then. Flying home tomorrow and back in the studio on Thursday. Okay, lovelies, that's all for now. Bye, my Instagrammers. Bye, my Facebookers. Hugs to everybody. Bye-bye now.